What's up, y'all? Welcome into today's episode of Forte Catholic. I am so glad that you are here, especially after missing last week. We'll explain what happened, but um, Allison and I are here together in studio today. We talk about um, some uh, the rough week that I had last week. We talk about the great week that she had, and then I have some things to complain about, some things that I should be thrilled about, but I'm actually kind of frustrated about. We have a great conversation today. We delve into some things that I've been kind of holding on to for quite some time. I finally felt like I wanted to get them off my chest, and today was the day to do it. We hope that you enjoy today's episode. If you do, please hit that subscribe button wherever you are watching or listening. Enjoy. What's up? Welcome to Forte Catholic. I am Taylor Stroll. That is Allison Jemima Sullivan. Hello, Miss Allison. How are you? Hello, Taylor. That's good. Nice to see Doing you. Good. And you. I feel like uh, you never really left, even though you did leave. I did. You went I, very far away. I went very far away, and not just like in miles, but in, um, I don't know, like emotions too. Like it felt very remote. All everything, everything about it. You went far away in emotions. Yes, you very that a lot. far away <laughs> from the. Do- <laughs> Hang on, buckle up. I'm going here, there, and everywhere. No, but like, yeah, there. It was like um, a big break from real life. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about how great your life is in a moment. First of all, we have to discuss how much my life. Sucks. Let's complain first, yes. shall we? Well, uh, you are the. Uh, I think it's pretty often. Yeah. uh, A lot of people would say this. I think that listen to our episodes together. Mm -hmm. You are often Mm -hmm. a light in the darkness on this show. Oh, that's kind. Uh, (laughs) It is very much going to be the case today. (laughs) All I have is negativity. (laughs) Okay. And you have some positivity. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to be like rainbow bright and you're going to be grumpy bear. What's the, there's, there's all those care bears, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Care bears. There we you, love care bears we on the show because yes, I have a uh-huh. big care bear on my belly. Uh-huh. Um, it's, it's funny too. If you're watching on YouTube, it's like we literally are dressed like we feel. <laughs> I look it's defeated. So I'm wearing gray, all grays. You're wearing bright green. You have like your what, what are these shoulder thing. Yeah, There's like, ruffles, ruffles involved. It's like I'm this little annoying nymph of happiness. <laughs> annoying nymph of happiness is actually a very good description <laughs> of you. Often, I'm gonna save that as I'm you like and my phone. Poppy the troll right now. Yeah. What, what was it again? Amazing nymph of annoying nymph of happiness. <laughs> annoying nymph of happiness. <laughs> same, same. Hey, hey Siri, call annoying nymph of happiness. <laughs> That's gonna be your new name in my phone. Um, so yeah, everything sucks and I'm dying. Uh, Except, hold on, I have a problem. Yeah. I think I'm an imp. <laughs> What's a nymph? An imp is more devilish. An oh. imp is like a little demon. Okay, I want to be a little like fairy. The, the, that's what I'm after. You are a little fairy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's you were right the first time. Okay, okay, fine. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> I might be an imp. <laughs> that's, 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 uh, so no episode last week because uh, yeah. I died again. Yeah. Uh, so here's essentially where we are. I've been sick. With it's 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 like allergies become sinus infections that become like ear infections and like I use my ears for everything I do Mm -hmm. because one I talk a lot and if my ears are messed up I sound ridiculous. You get louder (laughs) as if it's possible. (laughs) Is anyone out there? (laughs) You know, Uh, I also can't do my primary job, which is audio editing, because I can't hear anything. Yeah. Five of the last seven months, I have gotten some kind of ear infection, sinus infection, and I keep going to the doctor. You know, people who have been listening for a while know, you know, it's like I I, I went to see this doctor. I go to my primary doctor. I go to my ENT. They've tested me for everything. I think I mentioned a couple weeks ago. They even tested me for like fun diseases uh, like mono. Uh And uh, I was deemed not sexy enough to have mono, you know, (laughs) like. Uh, but you have not swapped spit with spit with near <laughs> near enough people, near, enough people near enough people to qualify. Um, so, like, it's like ob- pretty clearly like autoimmune. Like something is clearly yeah. wrong with me, right? Yeah. But they can't figure it out. They've tested me for everything, can't figure it out. Uh, it's so frustrating. So I I go to you know I essentially a few months ago. Maybe it was about a month to two months ago. 
I've talked about this doctor's visit quite a bit. I went to see my ENT and he was like, all of your problems are because you're fat. I'm like, thank you. You know, <laughs> like, he's like, oh, you're, you're snoring. You can't sleep. You're getting sick. Everything. So oh, it's because you're fat. And I'm like, wow, can an ENT fix that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm like, is there a, is there a prescription? Like, I yeah. know the prescription <laughs> is like, you know, eat well and, uh, you know, like walk around a little bit. You know? uh-huh. um, but the, the hard thing is whenever you are sick, you don't want to walk around like we got a, right. got a like a stationary bike and it's like yeah. I do those things when I'm feeling well yeah. but it's like these sicknesses have been knocking me yeah. on my ass like everything's I, 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 connected in yeah. bed so like legitimately for the last two weeks I've been laying in bed yeah uh, I have worked for like an hour to two hours a day when usually I work like eight to twelve hours a day yeah and it sucked it really is bad and I don't this is kind of a joke kind of not <laughs> but one day. I was supposed to come over to record your show and it was a day where it was not physically possible to get all the things done that I needed to get done. And when you said, Hey, I can't record. I'm not feeling well. I was like, Oh, hallelujah. You're so thrilled. So, (laughs) so if there's any consolation at all, know that your illness made one of my days better. I'm so happy for you. (laughs) No, I'm, I mean, I am your light in the darkness. That's that's right. No, I, it, it's really a terrible feeling and especially to not have answers. Like there's power in naming things. And when you don't know what's going on, my hope is that redoing this room, you spend so much time here that redoing this room, getting new carpet is going to really fix a lot of things. That's what I'm hoping. So here's what we're doing. Essentially. Yeah. There was a lot of flooding in this room. Yeah. And I think like mold and kind of the smells, we, 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 we stripped out all the carpet. Um, we are getting like essentially like this week, the day the show comes out, we're spending thousands of dollars to fix like the landscaping so that the house doesn't flood anymore. We we're cleaning out air conditioning units. We're, you know, we finally have a little bit of money where yeah. we can fix these right, things, you know? Right. Um, I, I'm starting allergy shots again, essentially like we can't figure it out. So we're just going to do it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're like, yeah. hopefully something fixes because it. Because something's you know? got to give. And the thing, you know, for me, I don't know if this is true for you, but you know, I was saying earlier that, you know, one thing always leads to another or or everything's connected. And it's like, I cannot feel well for a while, but then like mental health kind of starts to take this downward spiral too. If it, you know, lasts for too long, there's something about staying in bed that's so demoralizing. Yeah. 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 So a lot of the prayers for Taylor, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. A lot of like the depression stuff that kind of surfaced for me for the first time when COVID hit started, you know, coming back last, last week, last couple of weeks. And it's just been kind of strange you know um but uh there is there is some good news in this i'm all ears they told me that i needed to lose weight Mm -hmm. last week Mm -hmm. i ate six salads (gasps) roughage like real green yeah yeah roughage like so uh when i started the foundations course which i talked about a lot Yes. I would eat one salad a week. Okay, that's what because we have. it's like our big meal. It's, uh-huh. actually, it's actually it really was nice. Kind you know? of forced on you, and right. you got to make your own. You had some agency. I didn't and, have to like... put it all out. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> <laughs> it was easy. Uh-huh. Um, so you know, uh, essentially, I was just like, there, I, I, I hit this moment where I'm like, it's something's got to give. Like I think you said that, right? It's like something's got to give. Something's got to change. Um, so I start eating the six salads. I also get incredibly sick. So I've lost 10 pounds this month. <gasps> well <laughs> I <done>. did it. <laughs> we Good did job. it together with yes. my with my salads and sickness. <laughs> but here's the thing. Success is the biggest motivator. So just those 10 pounds can be a really good start to 15 to 20. <gasps> Yay. I love that. And I have a guest coming on my show that I really want you to hear. And you're going to be the um, the guest host on that one. So oh, good. it's intentional. Good. Uh, so part of it was like happy. A part that there's just been a lot of like good and bad all all in this right where I I um I realized that I had lost ten pounds in a month and I'm like that's great but then I also I started doing math again mm-hmm. and I kept telling people that I had gained the COVID nineteen because I gained about nineteen to twenty pounds right and then I l- lost mm-hmm. ten mm-hmm. and I was like mm-hmm. I'm still <laughs> quite a bit away from where I want to be <laughs> so I realized after I lost ten that I was doing my that math really wrong, uh-huh. and I had gained more weight. That I yeah, thought. Yeah. So I had gained about 30 pounds since COVID. Now yeah. I've lost 10. Yeah. So now I've gained about 20 yeah. pounds since COVID. Yeah. So uh anyway, we're throwing a bunch of money at it. We're throwing a bunch of stuff at it, trying to trying to fix the the issues. Um 
and hopefully it will be gone soon. Yeah. Because I'm really just kind of tired of it. And like, yeah, just kind of. You're not difficult to be around if that's any other consolation besides making one of my days easier. Well, I think <laughs> maybe I'm not difficult to be around. You might just, be difficult I, to live with. I don't. I, I was about to say that I have been. I haven't been difficult to be. I, I just haven't been around. Yeah. Like I've legitimately like been yeah. in my bed. Like my son noticed it the other day. So mm-hmm. um, he had his first football game and I mm-hmm. had like enough mm-hmm. energy to like get out, go do that. Uh, and then I came home and like crashed and I was yeah. in bed like the rest of the day. Yeah. And it, like it comes like my energy comes in waves. So I was like done like the whole rest of like the daytime. And then around four or five o'clock, uh, my parents brought him a new bed. Like bed frame, new mattress, but cool. they didn't have a box spring. Like it didn't fit in the in the, yeah, in the, yeah. in the vehicle they brought. So all I needed to do for like six days was go buy a box spring. Mm-hmm. I didn't have the energy yeah. to go get a box spring, yeah. right? And then finally on Saturday, we go get him a box spring. And we're having a good time. We're having like an adventure. We go to this place. It's like this furniture place. It has all, you know, it's this huge warehouse. We're having a, it's just me and him. We're having fun. Yeah. Like we bought the, the box spring in like three minutes. But then we just like go test out every sofa that they have. Like we're having yeah, a good yeah, time. Yeah. out and... And then uh, on the drive home, like, I know that he wants to play Fortnite with me. And he asked me on the way home, he's like, Dad, are you just going to go? Are you, are you going to, like, he wasn't being mean, but he's like, are you going to go lay yeah, in bed after? Because yeah. we have had a long day. Yeah, what should I expect? And I was like, I, I was like, I don't think so. And I got home. What I do? I just wouldn't go to go lay in bed because mm-hmm. I was exhausted. Yeah. Right. Um, so they've noticed. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Do you think that we are better? at accepting our limitations like once we i feel for me i feel like i am better at taking this kind of internal stock of okay i have capacity for that okay i don't have capacity for that whereas before maybe before quarantine before i don't know before i became really aware of my mental health i um i would just make myself do the things that i was supposed to do you know it's like that's just what you're supposed to do but there was a cost like there was a really high price and so like for example getting a box spring for my kid and i can't do that and then acknowledging that but then and then i would feel like this great moral failure you know for not being able to do something you know like why is this little thing kicking my ass but then on the other side of that is i don't have capacity for that right now. So not just recognizing I don't have capacity for that. I don't have capacity for that right now. And I will get to it and just kind of managing my life in smaller chunks. I've I, gotten better at that. I have not. I am such an achiever. And, yeah. And like I have to do my my to-do list. Yeah. That this is all very new to me. So uh-huh, not being right, able right, to right. push through 10 to 12 hours a day. It's like I have become less of a workaholic but then when I get knocked down this much, yeah, I don't like. That's when like the depression stuff starts to come in. Because exactly. It's like, I am like, who am I when I'm exactly not because you things. feel yes yeah. because you feel the moral failing of it when yeah. really, you know, not adjusting our lives around. You have been sick for months and months and months, and if you are not adjusting your life around that, that is a major thing. And if you're not adjusting your life around it, it's just going to take longer. I mean, it's just going to take several more months. So you adjusting your life, making your world smaller, making your tasks fewer, all of those things is what's going to get you to the other side. And a few like jillion dollars to <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. fix up the things. <laughs> I What I really hope is that um, even after I'm done being sick, that every time I eat a salad, I still average losing about two pounds per salad. Because I, salad plus sickness has equaled a lot of weight loss, which has been good for me. I think Great. I think that's a really good goal. If you did one salad a day that replaced like what? One Chick-fil-A a day? Like I, I, that is what I'm ordering for lunch right after we're done. With nice. This. Yeah. Nice. No, but like what I've done is like it's, it hadn't just been the salads. It's been all the stuff that like I know that I should have been doing. I'm mm-hmm. finally doing. Right. It's like I'm stopping eating when I'm full. I am getting uh, not not. Maybe not every time, but um, I used to get like like at Chick Fil A, I would mm-hmm. get like the number one sandwich, like the fried sandwich or whatever. Yeah. Or like we'll be Chick Fil A is not the best because it's like it's not super bad for you, but like even like Mexican food places or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would get like the big fajita plate and all this stuff. It's like now I'm just getting yeah like just a quesadilla and just eating that. Yeah. It's like that's plenty, right? So now I'm like eating and it's still good. It's just I'm not eating a ton. I'm eating simpler things, things that are easier for to to, to digest, things that are easier that are not as fattening, you know. Um I am making the correct decision yes. of what I'm putting in my body That's right. more often than not. Right. And it's always worth it. 
yeah. So um, I, I'll get a grilled sandwich today, like that, that sort of thing. So it's like I'm changing my life without completely revamping mm-hmm. it. Totally. You know? It's yeah. like I'm still eating out. I'm just eating out different things. I'm still doing yep. DoorDash. I'm yep. just ordering different things. Yeah. And, and it's I've, easier to do now. I feel like there are a lot more healthy options. Like the people have heard us. They have heard what we want. Right. We are all incredibly fat and we need your help because <laughs> I'm not strong enough to do it on my own. Yes. Okay. I wasn't supposed to be that depressing this whole time. This, this no, whole I think it's good. We can all pray for you very specifically. I like it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, to, to, to continue the 2.14 pounds per salad or whatever it has been. <laughs> um, okay. Your joys. Your joys. You, you went to... Uh, <laughs> where do you think you went? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so a little bit of backstory that I do not mind sharing because this does not embarrass me. Okay, so my son and I did this TikTok and in it, we were like, what are some things that you learned embarrassingly late in life? Okay, and so the video went like mega viral. It's our most popular one. And 18 views. Yeah. (laughs) So um, even over 18 million. It's like. (laughs) I think it's at like 25 million. Um, but how much is a copy cat? Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, actually, it's funny you say that because it doesn't matter. Okay, boring. <laughs> so, um, okay, so people kept leaving this comment saying that they <laughs> that they learned really embarrassingly late in life that Alaska was not an island. And I keep seeing this comment, and I'm like, what do they mean? Like, what's that mean? Like. It's not like what? And so, so I, I asked my husband, and he's like, "No, no, 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 babe, no, 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 no." And I'm like, "What? What's happening?" And he was like, "He gets out a globe. We ha- our kids have a globe, and he was like, where do you think?" Well, I start looking <laughs> where they <laughs> have it on flat maps. When you have a flat map, where is it? Okay, now. Yeah, explain this. <laughs> On a flat map, you are saying that Alaska is where? Kind of where they put Hawaii, you know? <laughs> right, bottom left. <laughs> like a little a, okay. a, a little south of California. Okay, so I'm. he's like, babe. And so he like points me to Canada, and I'm like, what do you know? Who knew? So I immediately call my best friend, and I'm like, Tell me where Alaska is right now. And she was like, listen, I do know where Alaska is, but you're not dumb. <laughs> I mean, that's what beefies do, little, right? A little different <laughs> than my reaction when you told me this story. <laughs> so I, I think this is fascinating. And so now I'm just taking polls. Who knows where Alaska is? I want to know who knows. I want to know how far off I am from like third grade geography. I was obviously absent many days to have missed this my whole public school career, okay? Now, my husband, who is very kind and, like, literally is, like, you're the smartest, you're one of the smartest people I know. It is obviously that you lack (laughs) curiosity. And I thought that was such a good explanation. Like, I don't give a crap where Alaska is. I just don't care. And so... You often don't care about the things that you're wrong about. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's a defense mechanism. (laughs) That is perhaps touche. <laughs> so um, anyways, I did not know where Alaska was. It never occurred to me to ask more questions about why Hawaii is so tropical and Alaska is so frozen. So that so happened. You thought California was where California is. I don't think anybody has any qualms about that. Right to the I left know where that. California like, is. You could you could look out from like I just didn't LA I don't I didn't think Alaska. about it, Taylor. I'm telling you. And Alaska, which is known for like the you know, like Yeah. Uh, I know I get yeah, it. Get around trail and Listen. you know, yeah, all, always ice and always dark. You thought you could look from Alaska, the island, to Hawaii. And like see Maui and be like, this is weird. No, I spent zero seconds contemplating. He has he has tundras next to Hawaii. Jot that down. (laughs) God can do all things. There's nothing that is impossible. So yeah, so I start telling the the story like at dinner and stuff, and Seth will like put his hand on my knee and be like, "Babe, don't." And I'm like, "No, I'm not embarrassed." I oh, don't you have it. should be. I know, but I'm not. He is right. I, is... I just don't have insecurities about being dumb. So I'm like. <laughs> you should. Uh, 
and, and, and it's funny because your your husband and I have very similar reactions mm-hmm. to this news. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's just kinder because mm-hmm. he has to live with you. Mm-hmm. I could send you off. Right. And then roll there. your eyes at me and then like, put it on the air. Th- this, and this, I gave you permission to do this. This, though, this I mean. is clearly yeah. one of like I when I think of like dumb things that people in my life have said. Uh huh. Like I have said dumb things a lot of my best friends. Sure. I, I don't rack those up in my brain when it comes to you. Mm-hmm. In the like I can't think of another dumb thing that you have said. Like, there are things you don't know about. Like, the technical stuff. I don't, like, you know, yeah. how, how to turn Yeah, on you've camera. always been very like, nice. Like, you don't know how to do about it, but I don't power expect buttons are. you to, right? <laughs> yeah. But I expect you. There are two things in yeah. the last two weeks. Yeah. Oh. I have never looked at you and, like, thought, like, Wondered. she is dumb. Yeah. I've never looked at you and thought that. Yeah. You told me this story. Yeah. And I was like. I didn't know anyone yeah. could be that wrong You're like about Alaska. You're recalibrating. Like, yeah. who I, is I, this person? Am I wrong about you? Yeah. I thought you were smart. Who's this person I thought I knew? In the same conversation, mm-hmm. we were talking about a group of quads. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you looked me in the eye mm-hmm. and asked me how many people were in a quad. No, stop that. That was a bad preface. That was a bad introduction I, <laughs> to that. Okay. Okay. Uh, you explain it how okay. you would like to. So no, hold on. We are talking. <laughs> we'll come back to you being stupid about Alaska in a moment. Okay. I accept that one. The quad. Okay. So listen, I didn't ask how many people are. Oh gosh, I did. But you did. Okay. I know, but hold you on. You looked me in the eyes no, and I stared that's at not, you for I a know, good nine and a half seconds. But I know what quad means. Listen. We were talking about several groups, alpha, foundations, quad, something else. And so we were talking about all of those. And then I was going back. I was like, wait, how many, um, how many people are, are in the quad? And then I was like, oh, 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 it's called a quad. No, 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 no. You did not have that realization. You no, said. Because you stopped and looked at me like, really? Are you going to ask I that? And then I'm like, oh, 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 that's why it's named that. No, I thought no, that it was. No, you did it. That's the problem. I looked at you after nine, ten seconds to let you have that recollection. Mm -hmm. To let you be... I gave you space, (laughs) which is what all you've asked for me to do. I gave you space. And in a conversation at lunch, nine to ten seconds is a long time. And then nobody (laughs) said anything. And I said... Do you really want to ask me? Yes, I said, would you like to think about that question? Yes, yes. And you said, what? That is accurate. That is what happened. Okay. I thought, what if it was named Quad? Because that's how many chapters Philippians has. And y'all go through Philippians. I didn't know. But then when you were- I have two quads on my legs. Maybe it's two. <laughs> that was creative. That was quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Now, we we almost agree <laughs> about you being stupid about the number four. <laughs> Let's go back to Alaska where we agree that you're dumb. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So I did not go to Alaska on vacation. You went to a very nice vacation, which was off the coast of? Um, Seattle. We flew to Washington. Yep. We flew into Seattle. And then we took a ferry. Did you know that there are a bunch of islands it off? A nymph. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong ferry. Um, full of nymphs. A ferry full of nymphs. And we took um there are a bunch of islands. There's like a ton of them. And we went to Orcas, Orcas Island. And it was delightful. We went to Orcas. Was, okay, Orcas Island. Orcas Island. Like, you did see Orcas. You, I wouldn't say you went to Orcas. I went to Orca. <laughs> I, I, went... I saw a whale. <laughs> <laughs> so you thought you were going to somewhere. Tropical like Hawaii? No. And then you ended up in Alaska? Or <laughs> No, no. I knew all along that I was there to see whales, and that's what I did. Here's, okay. So now you have been, was this your first trip to, like, the Seattle area? Yes. I've never been okay. to the Pacific Northwest. But you've been to Hawaii. Correct. You thought, when you went to Hawaii a, a summer ago or two summers ago? Um, a fall ago. A year ago. A, a year ago. You thought, prior mm-hmm. to this trip. Mm-hmm. That you flew over Alaska to get there. No, I didn't think about it for one <laughs> second, Taylor. This is what I'm trying to tell you. I didn't think they were like neighbors. I didn't think that you could like wave to one another from island to island. I just thought that it was, <laughs> <Wait>. you know. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, Orca's Island was delightful. It felt like You went with my husband and, and my husband only. Yeah, exactly. That's yes. exciting. And there were zero children or other people involved. And we just missed the big crowds. And so it felt very honeymoon-esque. It was really rejuvenating. Um, we hadn't been alone together in seven years. 
Like, I mean, for longer than a night or two. I feel, or two, I, I feel so. like I inspired you because my wife yeah. just went on our first yeah, vacation just for six did years. That. Y'all yeah. like, we have to one up them. That's yeah. what I felt. I felt like you were one up. It was really nice. And, and we're I like, really... we're doing your vacation, but one of us is a doctor. So we're going to like the Alaska <laughs> Orca Island. <laughs> So Taylor kept asking me, how's how's your vacation? And I just kept hashtagging, not Alaska. It's not Alaska. <laughs> I am not in Alaska. I know that. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was a reset for sure. It um, It's just this little, I don't know. It, you know how when you fall in love in, with something, you you recognize like a part of you in it? And so it was like... It, oh, I, I immediately thought of myself. So yes, I do realize <laughs> a part of me in myself. Yeah. But it was like, it felt like San Diego and Colorado just kind of combined to have this little beautiful island full of artists. Your it was... Geography references. <laughs> <laughs> I know where both of those are. Thank you very much. Although, oh, here's some more geography that's embarrassing. So we were moving to Minnesota and we were walking through the airport and we were going to go visit Seth's family in Iowa. And he was like, babe, point to where we're going. And he stopped at a map. And I'm like, I don't know. It's one of the square states. And he's like, that's not even true. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> not. No. So I did not know where we were moving or where he was from. Like, I could not point those out to, on a map. To be fair, I mean, who really cares about Minnesota and Iowa? Yeah. Like, well, I mean, Alaska, now Hawaii, I do. Now I, right. But, I mean, I think that that's even more evidence that there was, like, some global, huh, get it, geographical, geographical failure in my schooling. You know? I don't think yeah, it's my you, fault. You were the failure. <laughs> <laughs> you I care about it. who's in front of me, and that's it. I'm in Taylor's water closet. <laughs> dissecting life that's what i care about so y'all enjoyed it so y'all got to go on this on, the, on this vacation where i was baffled when y'all said that y'all hadn't been because y'all went to hawaii but that was with other people so you don't count yeah that. it was other okay. people yeah um so this is the first time that y'all were like, yeah and we just had um a very very slow there was no agenda I mean, we woke up late, we read, we listened to this parenting podcast that we've been listening to together. Um, we hiked, we had like two nice dinners. Um, it was just dreamy. It was really, really, really wonderful. And it made it last. It made it feel like we were gone a long time. The lack of activity. I learned that this summer too. We didn't really go anywhere this summer. And it was like, oh, that was a really long vacation. So I just kind of have learned things about scheduling and itineraries and all that. So yeah, we we both uh, accomplished absolutely nothing over the last week. It just looked very different. <laughs> <laughs> we both didn't have any itineraries or schedules. You just enjoyed yours a little bit more than that I did. is that is quite the summary. I did get to see an apex predator, and you didn't. But I'll show you pictures. Uh, I did see an apex predator every time I looked in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. If I lose another 10 to 15 pounds, oh, I'm back, baby. Taylor's getting <laughs> spelt over here. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Who's smart? Words, uh, Who's smart? Clearly neither of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, don't go anywhere. Whenever we come back, um, I have some things that I should be thrilled about mm -hmm. that I'm actually not thrilled about okay. at all. all right. uh, we're going to talk through that, one of which involves you and converts. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Just in case you missed our last episode, uh, we are going to Rome. Forte Catholic is going on pilgrimage to Italy, to Rome, Assisi, Florence, Tuscany, and we want you to come with us. You can find out all the information, how to join us at ForteCatholic.com slash travel. Uh, me, Father Anthony, I think even Liv said she's coming now, so we are going to have a great time uh, enjoying the sights, the holy sights, the beautiful sights, uh, the great food, drinks, um, and time together. Um, um, and we want it just to be a time of celebration and prayer and hanging out with uh, you, us, all the listeners of Forte Catholic. We hope that you will join us. Uh, we are going next summer in late July. Find all the information on how to sign up at ForteCatholic.com slash travel. Come to Italy with us. Welcome back to Forte Catholic. I am Taylor Schroll. And I would like to preface this conversation by saying that Allison Sullivan is a convert that I like. Okay. Okay. Talk right <laughs> to that microphone, convert. Okay. <laughs> so, something really big happened recently in the Catholic world. Mm. And I would venture to say that uh, the most common Catholic in America right now is none other than the guy from Holes, Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> He's like, 
Have you seen this conversation? You've heard of this conversation that he had? You know, I have. So listen, today is the Queen's funeral. And so I thought that, I mean, I knew that we weren't going to talk about like how (laughs) the Ukraine is out strategizing Russia or anything, but I was like, Taylor's going to make me come on today and talk about Queen Elizabeth. And I am someone who is completely not enchanted by the Royals. Like, you know, you know what every American should not care about the British monarchy. (laughs) I don't care at all. An old like to I me. I thought you were an, gonna make me talk about this, and I was gonna have to phone a friend. I'm like, live. An, an old, where are you? An old person died in Europe. I don't care. Who has no power? I don't care. Well, some random she's lady. like, she's really inhuman. It's like, I don't know her. You know, I mean, she has this impossible task of this really public but private life. Like, you know, nothing that you say could ever be misconstrued or controversial. Like, I don't know her. You know, so anyways, I was like, oh, gosh, I'm going to have to, you know, monarchy's a fraud. I don't understand why anyone cares. So, of course, we're not talking about war. I hope we're not going to talk about the queen. But then when you said Shia LaBeouf, I'm like, yes, I'm in. (laughs) So here's here's my my uh, all we're going to talk about is Taylor's feelings. Okay, I have a lot of feelings. Taylor needs to vent. Yeah, I have a lot of feelings about the Shia LaBeouf thing. Okay. My first experience, so Shia LaBeouf, for those who, uh, you know, you live under a rock. I mean, this is on the internet and Shia is on the internet. This this video with him uh, talking with Bishop Robert Barron has uh, like 1.8 million views that came out three weeks ago. Like very popular video, hour lo- over, over an hour long conversation. Yeah. My first experience with it was snippets. Mm-hmm. And the first snippet that I saw Same. was uh, Shia talking about being Catholic and everyone excited that there's this Catholic convert. Cause like being a Catholic, like you want, like we want the Mark Wahlbergs in our life. It's like, and people get mad at Mark. It's like, Oh, he's not perfect. The saint. It's like, well, the saints weren't perfect either. Shut up and leave me alone. Like he goes to church every day. He, he goes to mass. He, he prays. He's like a good Catholic dude. Okay. He was in Ted. Leave me alone. You know, we've all made mistakes too. Um, <laughs> like we want, you know, like the Mike Piazzas and like these, these, we want famous people to be good Catholics. It's yes. a thing that we desire. Okay. Uh, and so I see Shy, and at first I'm excited. And the first clip that I see over and over and over and over again on my social media is him essentially bashing the Novus Ordo Mass. Mm-hmm. So like the the mass that most people in America have grown up with, right? right. The, the 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 Trentine Latin Mass is has grown in popularity. Obviously, it was the only thing for a very long time. And then it's grown in popularity over the last five-ish, five, ten years or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Um, The first, like, I was excited because I love Shy. I love Holes. I liked, you know, his Transformers movies. Those came out when I was a kid and I didn't know about, like, Mm -hmm. movie critiques. So I thought they were cool, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. Was that other one? Disturbia? Like, there was just Mm -hmm. been an Mm -hmm. Eagle Eye. There's just a bunch of movies of Shia that I liked. Peanut Butter Falcon. It's fantastic. Never saw it. It It's great. It it had heart and emotion, so I avoided it. Um, (laughs) So I, I watched these videos and like legitimately my first feeling was like it was just all these trad accounts sharing mm-hmm. this new Catholic convert who is the new hip thing in Catholicism essentially bashing the Novus Ordo. What, what he said was like when he goes to like a quote unquote regular mass, right? Like a mass that you and I attend all the time. Like we're not Latin mass people. Uh, he was like, oh, it, it, you know, when I go there, it feels like a, a, a car salesman is trying to sell me something, you know, kind of sleazy or, you know. Inauthentic. Uh, it, 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 yeah, or whatever, right? And, oh, it frustrated me so much. Yeah. Because it just, like, for me, it was just, like, all the, the, the like, the trad people on my feed were just taking a victory lap. Right. Not, it's like, I should be happy that he's Catholic. Yeah. But it's like it's not it's like he was Catholic for half a second. And like obviously trads are Catholics, right? But it's like yeah. he is not a Catholic hero at the moment. He is a trad hero. Right. And that is frustrating me. Yeah. But it's frustrating me because of how how it's being used. It was a, it was a, I watched the whole conversation today. Mm-hmm. It was very good. Mm-hmm. Uh there are some other things that kind of frustrated me, but ultimately very good. But like that's the clip that's being shared. And it's frustrating because he is bashing something that I care about. Right. I care about the Novus Ordo Mass because it is the it is really all I've experienced. It's been my experience with Catholicism. I like it. Are there things? Do I like every mass I go to? No. I've right. very been clear, clear about that. But it frustrated me for many reasons. But that was the first, and I will yep. shut up now and let you respond. No. Um. Okay. So the the first thing that I have to say is that I feel like fame 
is dangerous. Like fame can kill people. Says the like, TikTok star. But, oh gosh. <laughs> no. but like, um, so celebrity, um, I, you know, I, I feel like there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. And we put far too much emphasis on anything that someone with who happens to have a large platform, which as we know, can happen to anyone, right? So yeah, I so I feel like the, <laughs> and so I feel like um the magnifying glass that gets put on that is not only a really difficult psychological task, number one, um, but number two is ill-advised. Like, you know, we keep wanting to put people on pedestals or dismiss them altogether and God keeps not giving us permission to do either. Right. Okay. So there's, so there's my first problem, celebrity. Um, the second thing that I was feeling about it is exactly what you said, which is, let me backtrack for a second to go back to Orca's Island. I experience God through nature and animals and creation. And to me, it is, it is when I feel the nearest to God. Um, Seth, that is not so at all. And that used to be a little bit of a, a point of contention among us because we wanted to share something deeply spiritual together. And so we kept trying to strong arm one another to see the beauty where we found beauty ourselves. Now being- He's smart. <laughs> so he connects with God intellectually. And you're like, oh, pretty animals in Alaska, look. <laughs> You had kind of God I created this monster. I <laughs> offered up Alaska. Okay. But now, 17 years into marriage, do you want to know what he was doing while I was taking pictures of orca whales? Watching football. He was taking pictures of me oh. taking pictures of orcas because it so delighted him that I was delighted. So here's so here's the second thing. So that was the first thing, celebrity. The second thing is I do not care what Shia LaBeouf's take on liturgy wars are. I do not care. You've been here five minutes, okay? I do care about how after God revealed himself to you, praise God, how you are going to live like Jesus. Not that it's my business, but I care. I care how you're going to serve the poor. I care how you're going to love your neighbor. I'm interested, okay? But I think that it is so rude to throw elbows at something that doesn't bring you joy. If Seth was sitting on that boat telling me how dumb it was that I think whales are beautiful. I just pictured your husband booing orcas. <laughs> Boo! You suck. You haven't said anything in years. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, what a bully, right? Like, so I just don't, I'm not, inter I'm just not interested in what you have to say. Yeah. And I, uh, but clearly a lot of people are. Right. Sure. Something because... million people have, have watched this and have glammed on to. They had a long conversation and a, a, a most of the conversation was about the things that you said you care about. His relationship with Jesus and how this conversion came about and how this community took him in. And it's like these beautiful things that I should be thrilled about. Mm -hmm. This 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 church brought him in. They they didn't um, you know try to just bash him over the head. They didn't tell him what he's doing. They just brought him into the community and slowly catechized him and brought him into the faith. Like that's that that was awesome. And he talked about like how it's affecting his life and how he's ch changing his life and like looking back on mistakes he's made in the past and trying to fix those. It's like that was the bulk of the conversation. But not only the the whole Latin Mass versus Novus Ordo came up multiple times, yeah. like it was being shoehorned in, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So it came up within the first five to eight minutes or whatever. That's like the the famous clip that's been going around. Yeah. But he kept bringing it back in. Gotcha. Every like twenty to yeah. twenty to twenty five yeah. minutes, and I was like, so he's picked up on he's picked up on some division. Right. So he so and whoever introduced this to him, which from what I've understood is Mel Gibson, is that I don't know if that's accurate, but um, whoever I, I did, that wasn't brought up in the interview. OK, well, it was like some, the Capuchin Friars because he's playing I mean, Padre Pio in, right, right, right. in this movie. No, I know that that's that was part of his conversion. But as far as Latin mass, I feel like it was Mel Gibson that oh, that wasn't that that was brought up in responsible the interview. for that. Um I feel like he has been let in on um, a family dispute, you know, and it's like he was super clear to pick a side. And so when really I, I wish that there was no family dispute, I wish that Seth could go intellectually, 
you know, re- receive the Lord or, you know, the ways that he does it and that I can go, you know, sit on a mountaintop and clap for a whale, you know, and that we could just appreciate one another. I wish that there was no, I would, let's put it this way. If he came out and started talking about how, you know, Vatican II was awesome and how he loves the mass we go to and I don't know, I wouldn't try to stick it to Latin mass people, you know, I just, I wouldn't like replay that clip over and over. I just, I think we should all get along and I think we should all experience God the way he created us to do it. Yeah. One of the, um, it has been one of the things that I have said over and over and over again on the show, especially recently, it's come up a lot recently and it's like, I didn't plan the Shia LaBeouf thing. So it's interesting that it keeps coming up. Yeah. Um, and I just, we just talked to, um, uh, grassroot cap. We just had him on episode mm-hmm. 299, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm, so whatever, mm-hmm. six, seven yeah. episodes ago. And he is super traditional, loves the Latin mass. And the reason I like him is that he's not the quote unquote rad chat. He's not the guy mm-hmm. bashing yeah. other people. Right. He is sharing very clearly what he loves and prefers. Right. Um, without bashing the other side. Yeah. Right. Um, and one of my favorite things about Catholicism that I, that I, that like, is that we have the option. Mm-hmm. I have the option Amen. to go to the Novus Ordo Mass and, and and Keith has the option to go to the Latin Mass. Yeah. Shia has that option. You have that option. We um obviously there's, you know, if you depending on where you live, you might have the option, right? But as a Catholic, you have the option to go to the 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 Latin Mass, you have the option to go to the Novus Ordo Mass. You have the option to pray the hours, you have the option to pray with scripture, you have the option to pray the rosary, and you could you could choose from any of those whichever ones fit your aesthetic of yep. Catholicism, your yep. prayer style, your how you connect with yeah. God. Yeah. Um, and it's one of my favorite things is that there is balance. And uh, like kind of the second part that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, it's like I'm having to, to wrestle with my feelings on it because I should be thrilled that we have a convert to Catholicism, especially one that is, for the most part, most of the things that he said, I was like, that was really good, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, it's an hour and 20 minutes. Like, if somebody can listen to this show, it's an hour long and not, and, and you know, pick out a 15 second clip. Yeah. I might not look great, right? Sure. Heck, heck, I pick out the clip sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't look great, you know? Um, but like, you just air them on purpose. <laughs> right. Like, look how dumb we are, you know? Here, here you go. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I was wrestling with was not only this conversation, but other conversations that I have had with converts. You are a convert that I like a lot, but I didn't know you when you were converting. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I have had to wrestle with, with this conversation with Shia, with other converts, is oftentimes, we, we say all the time that converts make the best Catholics. Like, you are a very good Catholic because of your... You kind of had the Protestant roots and then you grew the you know, Catholic stuff around it, right? And that makes for a lot of great Catholics. Mm-hmm. But like at the beginning, I'm just going to say it. Converts are kind of annoying. Mm-hmm. They're kind of annoying, yeah. right? Because because like what you were saying, it's like he, like uh, with with Shia, he came in and essentially was like, he he is... It's he is like seeing himself in an expert as an expert in Catholicism, right? right? Which I'm very happy for him. Yeah. I am happy that he's had this conversion. He's not an expert in Catholicism, right? I know way more about Catholicism than Shia LaBeouf does because I've been here my whole life. I've studied it. I've worked in it, and it's like it's it's this it's this idea of it's this overzealousness of mm-hmm. new converts mm-hmm. that rubs me the wrong way, mm-hmm. and and I, like I'm not delusional enough to know that that is a problem with them and is it a problem with me yeah that there's the problem there's a problem with my frustration with it yeah but there's also a problem with that overzealousness and like i know better than you yeah i don't know if this is related or not and it might not be so i mean forgive me if i'm whatever i will not (laughs) i am deciding before you say it that i will not forgive you for what you're about to say great air it make a (laughs) thing out of it put it out there so um here's the clip (laughs) scene so the parable where god is like hey there's a giant banquet come on in and so people are coming and then they're like he's like here put on this robe and and then people are like no i don't want to do that and he's like okay then go and then i'm going to invite people from the streets like he can't get people to come right and so i i feel like the invitation you know which is open to everyone and all all the time always um to come in to be invited 
and to come in and kind of say, nah, I don't, I don't want that. And, and can I have a drink? It's like, there's, um, there's a posture of the heart, right? So to me, I feel like Shia LaBeouf walked into this grand banquet and he noticed some tension in our family home and now he's going to like speak out about it where it's like, I wish that you could just kind of sit and take, take some things in for a little longer. Now, I don't know. Maybe he's been at this for years, but I'm pretty sure like this was pretty recent. Relatively new. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but all that to say, I think that there is a posture of the heart that comes along with learning something new. Um, I don't think that a revelation from God takes a long time, but I think, you know, redemption in our spirits and in our hearts usually does. And, you know, to answer, you didn't really ask this question about how, like how I was as a convert. I mean, you seem to like me. I, I think that when I first learned about Christianity, I was zealous like that. I mean, I was really in college when my faith was taking off and I was telling my friends, I'm like, no French kissing, don't French kiss. You know, I am, I imagined that I wouldn't have liked you at the moment of your conversion. Right. I mean, I was, <laughs> I was fired up. I was, I was fired up and I had very, you know, strong ideas about the ways that, that things should go now that it's been, you know, 30 years. Wow. Really? 30 years. Um, what I have learned is that <laughs> my faith is not certainty plus more certainty plus more certainty equals certitude. You know, that's not ever how it is. And, and there's something like so closed off about certitude that um, makes us smug, you know, that makes us mean, really. What I've learned over these 30 years is that more so there's a knowing and then there's an unknowing and then there's a new knowing. And that Knowing, unknowing, new knowing makes you very humble. It makes you very open. And so that posture of humility instead of certainty and here's what I think and here's what I want and here's how it should look, that only comes with time. Your revelation, how God revealed himself to you comes in a second, you know, but that redemption and that posture requires maturity. Yeah. So. Uh, that is almost perfectly emblematic of a, like of a, a friendship that I had in college where um, it where fr it was a friendship that fell apart because of stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a, a there's a guy that lived in I lived in a um what are they called townhome? So there were like um uh, whatever twelve townhomes in this like complex, right? Mm -hmm. And there was this guy who I met there. We were we were similar age. I was in college. He was probably mid twenties. Um, good dude. Uh, and was a convert. Like was like at the time. Like he knew I was very involved. Like I was already doing ministry. I was already you know, leading worship for retreats. And like, I was like, you know, studying theology. Like I was in the stuff. Right. And he was converting, like, as we were becoming friends, he was like, just starting to go to church. He was going to like, uh, uh, he was converting from like atheism, like staunch atheism to like non-denominational Christian. Right. And at first we would have these great conversations. They were very open and loving and friendly and like literally hours, like he'd come over to, to, to my house. I'd go over to his house. We'd, uh, you know, go eat together. Like we were like friends, right? We're living life together. And we would have these hours of conversations of like, he'd be asking me questions and like, you know, when you're non-nominational and Catholic, like there's just, just differences. And he would mm -hmm. like ask questions and uh, he'd be like, oh, that's interesting. What about this? What? And like he was searching, right? Searching and seeking and looking for the answers. Um and like I think he would he would attribute or I know he did he attributed a lot of his like conversion to our friendship and our conversation mm -hmm. right and a, about a year in year and a half in you know he's 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 doing great he's he is he is all in he's going to church he's serving he's doing he's starting to do ministry at the church he is listening to YouTube videos of these preachers like every day and something in his posture changed like in a year year and a half in. Mm where it became combative, mm -hmm. where it was not necessarily combative, like Protestant to Christian, mm -hmm. but more like his posture changed to, I now know more than you and yeah. I'm going to prove you wrong. Yeah. It became argumentative completely, which yeah. like we, you know, and anytime you're, you have different thoughts of things, you're going to, you, you might argue every now and then, but it became the, the entire posture of, I now know more than you and I'm going to prove you wrong. And, and like, yeah, we stopped being friends. Because he was just being a jackass mm -hmm. and just being rude. And it's like, mm -hmm. I, it's like, it was one of those things like, I welcomed you to my home. I welcomed you to my life. And I was helping. Right? Yeah. Yeah. 
and like being pretty kind about it. Like I used to yeah. be nice, you know, like college, you know? <laughs> and uh, and like it was the whole posture of like I now know more than you. Yeah, and it ruined our yeah. friendship and like we've never spoken again yeah. you know our brains really like certainty because it's comfortable like we're less comfortable with this mystical nebulous thing which i want god to be bigger than me i mean it should be confusing you know um my my biggest problem actually circles back around to number 1 a little bit which is that you know Shiloh, he was very honest about that his life was on fire as i think you know his quote um and so he currently like there are there is a laundry list of abuses you know there are there and these abuses have victims these abuses have real victims and i just wish that bishop baron would have brought that up a little bit more i think that it's i have a very small microphone i have a very small platform but i'm very thoughtful about who i am shining a light on and giving a voice to um, you know, we, we just, I think that when we magnify celebrity, we get into some really tricky waters. I mean, I'm thinking of Kanye West or, or, or whatever, you know, where it's like, if I have a responsibility, I want to be wise and prudent about who it is I'm lifting up and shining a light on. And I just don't know that that was wise or prudent to, you know, here's this person. And, and I'm not saying that like anyone that's going to have a microphone needs to be living perfectly. That's ridiculous. But I wish that there in that space, there was a little more ownership of, you know, this is, this is what's happened. And he, and then the question, how does your faith, um, cause you to reconcile? You know, how are you reconciling? So I wish that would have come up because those things are so public, you know, I mean, it, that is, Everybody knows, you know, what a what a hot mess Shia LaBeouf was. So it's interesting. You, it's interesting you say that. And maybe it's a gender thing because um, I thought they brought it up quite a bit. They brought it up about three or four times. And he was he seemed very genuinely remorseful about it. Like he would he would hold his head in shame. And like um, and, and I think it's interesting. like the you know, the gender difference between us is I saw a lot of myself in him mm. because I you know growing up made a lot of mistakes with girls and I don't know exactly what he did, but like mm -hmm. did things that I shouldn't have. Right. And, um, I have never reconciled with mm. some of those girls, mm. you know, because it's like, you but, should. but I shouldn't, I shouldn't because at this point it's, it's, it's been too long. It would, it would add more awkwardness and it's like unnecessary. Right. It's, it's, I have had tons of conversations with, with, with like, I, I ask my best friend this all the time yeah, because it's like, I still feel a ton of guilt about it, right? Yeah. And it was like it was like it's like by the time I had enough conversion of heart, yeah. It was like it was too late, and it was just like yeah. we we, we, we yeah. both lived our own. Lives, I hear you. you know? I have an idea. It's not specifically for you. It's for men in general. But if there was this huge Me Too movement, right, from women to just normalize this, we're going to talk about it and we're going to do away with it, right? What if, men, there was an I'm sorry movement? What if? You know, and somebody has to be brave and go first. But how many men, just like how many women joined the Me Too movement, how many men would join an I'm Sorry movement? And it would be powerful. Uh, four. Mm -mm. A quad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it would be really it's, great. It's, it's, for me, it's like a balance of like, yeah, of like bringing up old hurts and old wounds that like, everyone's moved on from yeah you know um you know okay because you're right they did talk about his his failures a lot they did i guess i guess i guess it would be so painful to sit there as one of his victims and watch all of this unfold i think it's you incredibly know? So, painful for the girls that i've hurt to see me do anything publicly mm -hmm. and, 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 and so i've wrestled with that i've, I've wrestled with like you know you, you said like anybody with a microphone that's imperfect i am very very imperfect and i have a microphone in front of me every week mm -hmm. well not last week i was mm -hmm. sick um but like but this helps you know like so so what what shy is doing i think is a good first step i guess i guess what i'm saying is is less about shia and more about bishop Barron. And what if they had an interview too? You know, I mean, I, not to like trash. I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is. I'm like, you know, kind of formulating yeah. opinions as we talk, but it just feels like, um, it feels like a tornado of bad possibilities. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it's interesting because uh, 
with some things that have happened with, you know, Word on Fire recently, you know, they, I think that might be part of the connection, right? Like they've had their own issues in Word on Fire where Mr. Barron works, but like the, the, so I kind of came in after seeing the clips, I came in very weary, uh, leery? That's leery? Where either wary, wary or, or leery. leery. I, I, came, I came in very, that word, those two words of both of them. Mm-hmm. Because I was like, mm-hmm. how how did this conversation become whittled down to this one clip yeah. that is just bashing something I care about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, right, right, right. In watching it, mm-hmm. I was about as frustrated with Shia as I thought I would be. Mm-hmm. I was blown away with how well Bishop Barron handled it. Mm. Um, Ian, c- kind of to quote unquote prove my first point, right? So here we have this very overzealous convert again happy for him great uh, i am too but bishop baron in seeing the full clip essentially kept hammering home the point I, that i keep trying to make of like it is good that we have all of these things because mm. when they were talking mm-hmm. about yeah. the mass yeah they were talking about feel uh feel it yeah shia was kind of talking about feeling versus intellect yeah he, he had was, a feeling he was like uh that's a nice gonna be a good night uh when he would go to latin mass it would be like it was the rare occasion where like his brain would shut off mm-hmm. and he was just feeling because it was deeply. incomprehensible uh, so he, he felt yeah. the same way about like the rosary right which like i've shared before like the rosary's not my thing i've tried but like and i'm the same way my brain never shuts off but it's like but the the rosary's not quite my thing i love the mass um, but he was talking about intellect versus feeling and that how he was connecting with God through feeling. Mm-hmm. So that must be the best way. Mm-hmm. And Bishop Barron kept saying mm-hmm. like any, any, any time Shia would put to put forward a dichotomy. Yeah. Bishop Barron would say, it's Jesus the, is on the other side. Like, <laughs> also. It's the both and, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Which is like, we talk about the Catholic both and all the time. Yeah. And a lot of times, like you were saying, you, you called it like nebulous or mysterious. I mm-hmm. always talk about the gray. Like in Catholicism, there is some gray. Mm-hmm. And for converts, everything seems to be black and white, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It is this or this. I need, yeah, to clean up my yeah. I need to cut this out. I need to do this, right? Yeah. Um, when there is a lot of gray and nebulous and mysterious, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I loved what Bishop Barrett did. Because mm-hmm. when he talked about um, the Tridentine Mass versus the Novus Ordo, Bishop Bishop Barron would always bring back of like, yes, when, when, when the council happened, it might have been an overreaction to this. But it's like, there is good in both yeah uh when he talked about the intellect he's like bishop Barron starts saying it's like oh yes i as a young man uh or you know young man seminary whatever it's like i had these intellectual experiences with like aquinas and augustine and and like that's who bishop Barron is like he's yeah. this brilliant intellect right yeah but he said i also experienced god through deep feeling and these yeah it's like so at any time there would be a dichotomy bishop Barron would say like it's actually both and then they move on to like the next part of the conversation yeah. right but i like I, it it brought me a lot of um it was very validating to me that i was feeling these feelings and bishop baron was answering them right yeah yeah somebody who yeah. is more quote unquote like me not, not that i'm in any near, anywhere yeah. near his category right but like somebody who's been in and around the church for a very long time yeah. and studied these things obviously he's on a much bigger pedestal yeah. than, than i am on all of those things but it's like it felt validating that that was that I'm feeling these feelings about what Shia is saying and Bishop Barron is addressing, addressing and addressing responding it, yeah. to those. Yeah. Well, and I think even this conversation is a good example of, you know, mysterious nebulous gray because we're sitting here going, should we be celebrating or not? Right, you know? Yeah, yeah. And really it's like, well, we've got some issues, but yes, 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 we're celebrating. Um, but here are like the things that come along with it. So, right. yeah. So it, it, it has, like, it's been weird and I, I, the irony, the irony of us not doing an episode last week is that I feel like I've been able to somewhat come to terms with how I've thought about it. Yeah. It hasn't changed. Yeah. Like, I'm still pretty frustrated about the interview, right? And frustrated, I think, mostly with you know, new converts are just annoying and I, I, I it's overzealous and all that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> and Bishop Bear was kind of more the representative of, like, kind of how I think and believe. But then also just, like, wrestling and being able to be honest with like my thoughts and feelings about it of like i should be thrilled and i'm not and having to kind of like work through that Mm -hmm. and i feel like i have worked through that Mm -hmm. in the last Mm -hmm. week and like a big part of that was i was so frustrated by the clips 
Yeah. That I didn't. I didn't. Yes. I had zero desire. Yeah. To watch the interview. Yeah. So I didn't for two yeah. weeks until I was like, okay, I have to talk yeah. about this. So I watched it all. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, on two times speed, I watched it in like thirty <laughs> minutes. You know, but um, mostly it feels good. One that there was some validation of my experience from Bishop Barron, but two, um. I was just like, I, I, I'm just going to say it. <laughs> like, I'm just, yeah. just going to come yeah. out and say it because I feel like I'm not alone. Yeah. Well, exa- I was just going to say, yeah. you have such a good community, you know, to the, you know, everybody's kind of sharing these, these doubts and, and mine are, listen, I'm glad that God revealed himself to Shia. I think that's awesome. And my questions are really just around is shining the light on it, on that revelation is that ultimately going to be harmful? Whether that's um, what comes next or who he's hurt or whatever. Is, is this, does this do more benefit to the church than not, than just keeping it private and quiet and sacred? You know, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Which is really interesting because he talks about that mm-hmm. in the interview. That's the the mm-hmm. other famous clip was where he's talking about like Padre Pio, who's playing in this movie. Um, like when the church tried to shut him down, like kind of like the hierarchy of the church, but like, oh, you don't really have stigma, or you're not really like essentially those people that got proven wrong because yeah. Padre Pio is incredible, you know. Yeah. Um, whenever Padre Pio was told by his superiors to like kind of quiet down, and mm-hmm. he did, he mm-hmm. didn't schism and revolt, mm-hmm. he, he kind of did get quiet. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting that that was brought up in the interview, and that's kind of you know, what, you're, what you're saying here, but it's like, um, I still think it was very good that they did this interview, even though I have my qualms with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have your qualms with it, and the, mm-hmm. some are similar and some are different. Yeah. Um, but it is it is overall a good, and I, I think primarily that interview was not for me. Mm-hmm. And I think the yeah, reason it's that's, popular that's... is not because of Catholics. It is for people like where he was before. Yeah, interesting. So it's like this show is more for people who are like have been Catholic for a while or kind of like, you know, welcoming people in. Mm -hmm, Right. mm -hmm. But he is for the people completely outside the church. Like they talk a lot about how they had some similarities in like their intellectual formation, like non-Christian intellectual formation. Right. And I think that's why the interview is so popular. Yeah. I think we are seeing it very popular among like the, our trad friends. Yeah. But the reason the actual interview is popular is, right, right, right. is like is, non-Christians, yeah. atheists. Yeah. And perhaps sort of a curiosity, thing. which I do think is good. You know, it's interesting. I, I'm just like sitting here kind of wrestling with my own thoughts of, you know, should he get a spotlight or not? Um, and I was... I'm, I, uh, your reaction is making me very glad that you don't know all of the history of my life. <laughs> Well, cancel Taylor right now. <laughs> yeah, I I do believe in reconciliation. I think that it would be good for everyone. But I I w- I had a friend, a dear friend, before I started doing things with more of an audience, whether it was speaking or writing or whatever. Um, I was distressed, and it, w- it was, was was at Lupe's, and over a you know a basket of chips, she pounded her fist at me, and she said, "Allison, you are not going to do this perfectly." You're going to mess up, you know? And so I think that as a church, you know, making room for that, um, you know, is, is really important. I'm not saying Shia needs to live a perfect life now, but I am curious how he's going to start organizing his life around the ministry of Jesus. Yeah. I'm interested to see the movie. Um, I saw one clip from the movie where he says the F word. And I think it's hilarious. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah. Why? Why? <laughs> why are you doing yeah. this? Uh, maybe I need to learn more about Padre Pio, but that's not something I ever read that he said. So yeah. I think that's kind of fascinating. But anyway, um, I am glad we had this conversation. I am glad primarily that I had this um, uh, conversation with you. One, because of your insights, but two, and primarily because uh, you know, the fact that you're a convert and I like you is mm-hmm. the Kevlar that I needed. For this right, 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 <laughs> right. Yeah, I came in a little different to Catholicism than I did to Christianity. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we hope that you guys enjoyed this week's show. Allison will be back soon. I'll be back next week. See ya! Thank you guys for watching and listening today. We hope that you enjoyed our conversations. Uh, If you are not 
subscribed yet to our YouTube channel. We have so much going on over there right now. We have a new um, podcast episode every week that goes up on YouTube.com slash Forte Catholic. We also just finished our series uh, recapping all of the Lord of the Rings movies as we prepared for Rings of Power with Caitlin Fachista, T with Tolkien. All three of those are there now. So if you are enjoying Rings of Power and want to, um, you know, backtrack and, and uh, go through all of the Lord of the Rings movies with us, you can do that on our YouTube channel as well. And also, I've been talking about foundations for the last couple of months on the show. And we are finally bringing that to you on our YouTube channel. So it's essentially like Catholic Foundations, top 10 things that a Catholic needs to know, uh, taught by myself and one of my friends who has a master's degree in theology. We hope that you enjoy it. Um, essentially every week, we're going to be recording it live. It's the thing that we're doing here with our parish. We're recording it and we'll put them up every week. So uh, your little dose of Catholic theology um, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Forte Catholic. Um, go check that out. Subscribe so you never miss a thing. Hit that old bell and I will see you guys very, very soon.